सो हाई गाइज माई नेम्स नचिकेता वेलकम बैक टू अनदर वीडियो इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोन बी डिस्कसिंग वेरी पॉपुलर रेगुलराइजेशन टेक्निक्स कॉल एस लैसो रेगुलेशन एंड रिज रेगुलेशन ऑल्सो कॉल एस दी एल वन रेगुलराइजेशन टेक्निक एंड एल टू रेगुलराइजेशन टेक्निक नाउ दिस इज अ वेरी फंडामेंटल टॉपिक एंड आई एम गोन बी डिस्कसिंग एवरी थिंग यू नीड टू नो अबाउट इट लिटरली टेन ट्वेंटी डेटा साइंस इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन कैन बी आस्ड आउट ऑफ दिस टॉपिक एंड आई एम गोन मेक श्योर टू आंसर ऑल ऑफ दैम and if you do like it subscribe to this channel and like this video as it motivates me to put out more content so let's get started what you see on the screen is everything you need to know about these techniques but let's start from scratch all right lasso regression or ridge regression are basically regularization techniques and regularization techniques is used to prevent overfitting now i have made a separate video on overfitting which you should watch but to give you a gist of this a lot of times it happens that your model will perform really well on the training data however it will fail to perform well on the test data this is a scenario where your model is said to overfit and this is where we use these techniques as preventive measures so lasso regression is basically an l1 regularization technique and a ridge regression is called as the l2 regularization technique so let me tell you what these techniques are and it's going to be very clear soon so in any machine learning or deep learning model right you have an actual output and you have a predicted output for example if i'm trying to predict the weather uh, on a sunday right let's say the actual temperature is 10 degrees celsius and i made the prediction that the temperature would be 12 degrees celsius right so there's an actual value and there's a prediction i'm making so there's always going to be a gap between these two and my goal with the machine learning or deep learning model is to bridge this gap right so a loss function is used to measure the difference between the actual and predicted output the loss function basically tells you how bad your model is so any model will be using some or the other loss function in this case i'm assuming that we are using a mean squared error which basically takes the error it squares it and takes a mean of it on all training samples so what lasso regression does is it takes a normal loss function which you're using to measure loss and it adds a penalty term this what i have underlined with red over here is the penalty term also called as the l1 penalty so as you can see normally the cost function would simply be the mean squared error but in lasso regression we also add this term which is alpha into 1 by 2 into sum of all the weights so what is weights again i have explained in previous video let me give you a gist of it so over here you can see an equation right y is equal to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 plus m4 x3 square plus b right this can be any equation which you could be using to predict the output from a given input for example in this case i have assumed that there is an output y which is basically for predicting the height of a person and it could depend on certain parameters like where x1 is one input which is let's say the parent side x2 is how many hours a person is exercising on daily and x3 is how much nutrition is consuming let's say grams of protein on an average per day and x and just square of that is x3 square which will also be another feature so in any machine learning model right you'll have different features like in this case x1 x2 x3 and x3 square and you're using that to predict an output so the importance of these inputs is denoted by m1 m2 m3 and m4 which is also called as the weights for example you can imagine if m1 is let's say 100 so x1 will be multiplied by 100 and it will have a very big effect on the output on the other hand if m1 is 0.01 this particular input will have a low effect on the output right so the sum of all these weights is is what we are adding over here as the penalty in lasso regression and it is very intuitive why you are doing this in overfitting what happens right i have explained this in previous videos as well that sometimes it can happen that a particular feature is given too much importance in that scenario it is likely that your model is going to overfit so when we add the penalty right so if a particular weight m1 is becoming 1000 right so that 1000 is also going to be added to the loss in the lasso regression equation so the cost is going to become very huge and the model will try to avoid that basically we're trying to constrain the feature importance given to each input right to give you a more clear example i've i've taken this image from google and uh, i'll leave an a link for the original source as well in the description so basically you can see how underfitting appropriate fitting and overfitting example looks right for example in this case there are two features x1 and x2 which are on the x and y axis 
and using these two there are two classes which are separated right for example the green cross is one particular class and these circles are one particular class the goal is to form a decision boundary that separates these two classes so underfitting you can see is a very basic model which did not learn any patterns in the data appropriate fitting is that model which understood the pattern pretty well and made one or two misclassifications as you can see the green cross over here are misclassified but that's fine so this is a very simple curve overfitting on the other hand is a very complex curve which will perform well on the training data but you can see this is not going to be a generalized pattern so if you look at the red decision boundary right for overfitting this is going to be a very complex equation this is probably a polynomial of degree 5 the equation for this could be something like x1 square plus x2 square plus x1 q plus x1 raised to the power 4 because that's how you get a complex curve like this right so a lot of features are there so maybe you don't need x cube over here maybe a simple two degree polynomial a simple quadratic equation could do the job so that is what we do using regularization techniques we are gonna reduce the weights so again coming back to this particular uh, example of predicting the height of a person using the particular inputs x1 x2 x3 and x3 square let's say if x3 square was not necessary right maybe we didn't need a quadratic equation so it will simply reduce m4 to 0 and change this equation to a straight line equation right that is what regularization techniques are trying to do they're trying to reduce the complexity of the model whenever a complex model is not required and you can do with lesser features and smaller weights your regularization technique is gonna try to do that so that is what lasso regression does and rich regression is almost same but instead of adding the weights, the sum of weights directly to the cost function, it is going to add the square of weights, right? This basically increases the penalty. So both are doing the same things, right? They're trying to reduce the feature importance. So basically, this, this sum of um, weights in lasso regression, this is called as the L1 penalty. And the square of weights is called as the L2 penalty. If you're adding L1 penalty to a regression model, we call that as lasso regression. You can take the same L1 penalty and add it to any classification problem as well. In any deep learning problem, there are going to be certain optimizers that are going to be using certain loss function. To any loss function, you can simply add L1 penalty or L2 penalty to bring in regularization. Right? So, lasso regression and ridge regression are only used when these particular penalty terms are applied to regression techniques. So, I hope that's clear so far. Now the very important question that can be asked in a lot of data science interviews is that when should we use lasso regression or when should we use ridge regression? I'm going to explain that now. Alright, so when lasso, when ridge? Lasso regression should be used when you want to remove unnecessary features. Right? Let's say you have hundreds of features in your data set and you know that there are lots of features which are not important. You want to basically do feature selection. In that case, lasso is preferred. But if you don't want to do feature selection, instead you want to build a robust model which will basically take a lot of features and give moderate importance to all these features, then you should prefer ridge regression. So let me give you an example of why this is true, right? So let, so again we'll go back to the same equation, right, of predicting a, like the height of height of a person using some parameters, right? This is a completely random equation just to show you how this works, right? So let's assume the okay. Let's assume the inputs x1, x2, x3, and x3 square as one for now. So here I have presented two weight matrix, right? In basically machine learning, deep learning, right? You're going to be experimenting with different weights, right? So let's say you have two possible combinations. So one on one hand you have four weights, basically for m1, m2, m3, and m4, where m1 is one and all the other weights is zero. And another combination you have in where all the weights are 0.25 and m1 is 0.26. Right? If you look at the output, if you substitute the values of m1, m2, m3, m4 in this equation, right? You will see that you get the output value as almost same. In one case, you will get the output as 1. And in the other case, you will get the output as 1.01. Right? So output wise, both of these weights will be very similar. Lasso regression will prefer the weight on the left hand side and ridge regression will prefer the weights on the right hand side. You can very easily see this if you look at what they are trying to minimize, right? 
so basically lasso regression is trying to minimize the sum of the weights right it will try to pick the weights that have the less magnitude so on the so this particular weight matrix will have a sum of 1 right 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 and the weight matrix on the right will have a sum of 1.01 .01. so lasso regression will prefer will prefer the weight on the left hand side but if you look at rich regression it prefers the weights which are gonna give the minimum sum of squares so sum of squares for w will be 1 but sum of squares for w on the right hand side is gonna be very less than 1 right because when you square 0 0.25 you're gonna get a very small value so both these techniques will dif prefer different types of weights so you can see in the left hand side what we what we have done is m1 is 1 and the rest weights are 0 it is basically saying that all the other features are not important we're going to only select one feature so this is basically feature selection right that's what lasso regression does it does feature selection for you it tries to remove unwanted features but the right hand side weight matrix has given you a robust model it has taken all the features but has given you moderate importance for each feature right so that is the difference between lasso and rich regression and this is a very important question asked in a lot of data science interviews as well when to prefer what and exact working as well so you can show this example whenever somebody asks you this right and so that was it for this video if you did like it do like this video and subscribe to this channel if there's any doubts do leave that in the comments and see you in the next video